Peace and blessings, family. Peace and blessings. What's happening? Live at the farm. Live in other garden. Peace and blessings. <clears throat> what I go on? Got our sister on with us. How you doing? Peace, beloved. I'm doing well. How are you? Thanks for life. Just enjoying the golden hour. The yes. sunshine. Yes, it's Hello. beautiful. A beautiful day at the farm. Lovely. Welcome to ATL. I hear you in in our city. Yes, I am. I am. How you loving it? I love ATL. It's definitely a second home to me. Okay. Give thanks. Well, welcome home. <laughs> Thank you. Welcome. And the rooster, the roosters welcome you as well. <laughs> hey, rooster. So for those of y'all who are joining us live, uh, we, we are grateful to have a very special conversation with our sister, Kateria, who is an astrologer, and I would say, based on my understanding of life, to say she's an astrologer is just putting it mildly, you know, uh, because titles, especially with this English language that we speak, often are English words, let's just put it that way, very seldom really um, encompass the reality of a thing, you know what I'm saying? And, I, and I'm really looking forward to kind of dipping into that with her and just talking about that, you know what I mean? Just unpacking that as we say so we're gonna have pretty much astrology 101 class conversation tonight and we're focusing on the es the essence of love you know the element of love which i would argue i'm sure most of y'all would agree is something that uh makes the world go around you know it's, that's not just cliche you know that's an old song but it's something that we can scientifically in air quotes i'm being a little facetious because so-called scientists are now catching up to what our ancient way has always said, you know, in the, in the modern time. So I'm going to give you all the opportunity to like and share the video. You'll hear this again on the radio. So if you hear me make mention to WRFG radio and you hear me make mention to Thursday, it's not because the heat got me um, hallucinating. We're actually pre-recording this for the radio. So we're going to kind of feed two or three birds with one seed. But our sister Kateria is with us, and without any further ado, I want to welcome you, WRFG Atlanta. This is the Ancestral Rock. We are live every Thursday from 2 to 4 p.m., and we're talking about ourselves. And today, we're taking a deeper dive into the world of astrology. Uh, and this is a sister that I had the pleasure of meeting. I want to say time be moving. So it wasn't last year because I was traveling. It was the year before, I think. When um, 2020. 2020, yes, Queen of Fool, uh, Queen Esther visited our farm, Supernova Slum. This is our farm uh, with the whole family of you know, Wanik Shabazz and them. And a little bit after that, I had the honor of co hosting the Day Out of Time event. And the sister was speaking there. And immediately I was drawn to her, her insight. You know, um, you, you always can tell when somebody is doing what they love versus what they you know, what they think they got to do or what, what's a good hustle or whatever it is. I'm not throwing a shade in anyone, you know, the hustlers and everything. I'm just saying it's always a great gift to humanity when you are communing with someone in any walk of life who is doing what they love. You know what I mean? Like, I don't know about y'all, but I love being at a show and seeing an MC spaz out on the mic. <laughs> right. right. And seeing them... You know, seeing a musician, Dr. B. Sirius was with us the other day, and we were talking about, you know, back in the day, them musicians, you could, they weren't looking at the audience or nothing. It's not like they're antisocial. They're out there playing for thousands of people. But they were doing that for them. Right. They were deep in the pocket, and you know when somebody's just in the pocket doing their thing, right? 
So this sister, I'm saying all this to say, my first encounter with her was a sister who is in her pocket, in the pocket, doing her thing. And so we're grateful to commune with such individuals. Sister Kateria, welcome to the Ancestral Rock. Thank you so much for having me, Ross Kofi. I'm so honored to be here. Give thanks. Well, let's talk about love. You know, let's talk about love. Let's talk about astrology. Uh, I want to say first and foremost, we're ultra serious, but not very formal in our approach in terms of, you know, um, journalism. You know, we're ultra serious and we're ultra serious, not but about what we do. And the, the mission is to, you know, to re reflect and to re be a reminder to be a reflection of the beautiful reminder and remembrance of ourselves. We've been scattered all over the place. Our whole being has been scattered, you know, in, in so many different ways. So the remembrance, as you well know, is what the, 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 the call of the hour is, to come back together. So with all that being said, where would you start the conversation? When we talk about, let's just first about astrology. For for those who may not really be aware of astrology, you in the ATL, you in the Bible Belt, where there's a lot of people that still may feel like, hey man, this is the this is something that is ungodly. Or even if you're not talking to those people, you know, that's there's that's that element is there, but just folks who just might not be hip or might have the wrong impression. Give us like my definition community. or my analogy of it. Yes, please. So astrology this is one of my quotes with astrology. This is uh, Queen of Fula's favorite quote from myself. Mm -hmm. Astrology is the story of the heaven's influence upon the earth. Mm. When you align with the stars, you live a life of a heavenly existence. Astrology points to the forecast of your life. Astrology has been around for hundreds of thousands of years. When the first human beings were on earth, they noticed when the moon, what the moon was doing, they noticed what different planets were doing. You got to understand that our skies were a lot clearer 100,000 years ago, mm. so thousands of years ago, and the planets were closer. So it was easier to see them and to make sense um, and to, to understand them, to know them. And so our great ancestors realized they 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 noticed patterns in the sky and when certain patterns were taking place in the sky how they affect us on a daily basis and how these patterns also affected our personalities in just life in general now there are a lot of people that don't believe in astrology they don't find it to be practical mm. meanwhile science has proven that the moon, our moon controls the waves of the ocean. The moon affects water. Well, if we are 70, 80, 90% water, why wouldn't the moon have an effect on us? And we all live on planet Earth. And the planets, Jupiter, Saturn, Mars, Venus, all of the planets are essentially the cousins and siblings, aunts and uncles of planet Earth. Mm, mm. So you have been affected by your cousins, your siblings, your aunts, uncles, your parents. So why wouldn't the planet Earth be affected by her cousins, siblings, aunts, uncles, and parents? as well that's a very 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 clear very clear analogy response thank you so much thank you uh, i hope you make that into a t-shirt uh, i saw earlier how you were you were mentioning on your on your your instagram page about you made a very important distinction between the spirit of abundance and capitalism oh, so okay. you know and 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 Oftentimes, we throw the baby out with the bathwater. So, you know, sometimes on one extreme of the spectrum, of the thought spectrum, one may feel that commerce in general is capitalism, but we know that we've been, our ancestors have been practicing commerce for millennia. So capitalism is a system that is, is a non-sustainable system that's about raping the, 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 
the the life force energy of the people of the planet and the energy of the planet, you know, and, and all of that. So I'm just saying all that to say, make it a T-shirt with no sh with no shame. <laughs> I love that. Yeah, that definitely needs to be a T-shirt. And the reason why I made that post, and I'll say what the post is. So I stated today, I stated, excuse me, I'm trying to make sure that the sun isn't affecting my phone too much. But the post I stated, um, don't allow the spirit of capitalism to be disguised under the words abundance and prosperity. Mm, 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 mm. Talk because, about it. Yeah, so as people, we, especially in the enlightened community, we utilize the words prosperity and abundance. Many of us are entrepreneurs and we are, you know, talk, we're, we have our businesses, we put our prices out there and things of the likes. Mm -hmm. But, and we, you know, we're making money. I make really good money with what I do. Mm -hmm. but where is that fine line between prosperity and abundance and capitalism? And I personally fell victim to the spirit of capitalism, allowing it to be disguised mm -hmm. by those terms, prosperity and abundance. Mm -hmm. So yes, I do know that the creator is abundant and prosperous. I do. I am under that understanding that as a spiritual person, I do deserve to be prosperous and abundant myself in my life as well. But where has the darker forces in the, the energy of the darker forces, where, where has it infiltrated my thinking, my thought mm -hmm. processes and the things that I am doing in my business and in my world, you know, mm -hmm. and I recognize when I am not in my highest vibration, when I'm doing things that is not out of the frequency of love, but more mm. so out of the frequency of fear. And when mm. it comes to cap the spirit of capitalism, you will know that you're doing things out of the frequency of fear when, when you're like in that hustle mode like oh hustle let me oh let me put see if i put this out there then i'm gonna get this and then now we're gonna turn that into that and da, 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 da. Like, now don't get me wrong being strategic and being business oriented is one thing but like oh you know what if i sell this like this i'm gonna make a million dollars boom like that what is what is your purpose behind that what why are you hustling in that way and what are you selling i see a lot of people selling stuff in the enlightened communities Things that should cost, you know, events that should cost 20 bucks and they're charging $400, you know, and that's capitalistic and that's hustle. That's that hustle culture. I see a lot of the hustle culture taking place in our community and I'm not acting like I didn't fall victim to it. I certainly did thinking, oh, I'm a businesswoman. You know, I'm growing. I'm expanding. You know, I got to make that bread. Da, 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 da. But it's like, wait a minute. That's the spirit of capitalism, cat. Because my, my monthly expenses, my life is taken care of, you know. So I got to make sure while I am growing and blossoming and becoming even more abundant and more prosperous, do know that dark energy is dark. So it, it can go unseen. And just make sure that I am not, you know, also being um, manipulated by my own dark energy um, and falling victim to capitalism. So mm. that, 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 that's a whole conversation in itself. And we're not going to go there today. And I want to ask you, though, for starters, how did you balance that? Thank you for sharing from your own personal experience. How what are the formulas you use to, to balance that? Because that's something that we could easily, that's a, that's a world that we could easily dip easily into. You know, how, how, what, what are some simple things that you do to balance that, to make sure you're in, in the way that feels good to your soul as a business yeah. person, living in this world? And that's what's huge. So the soul part. So, you know, we're dealing with um, lessons of understanding things financially right now in the world. That mm -hmm. is a theme. And, I know a lot of people are, di are struggling um, financially and I had to sit back and see how I am abundant and prosperous and grateful for my existence 
And I know that this world is really tricky for a lot of people to live in and to make ends meet and to do what they need to do for themselves in their life. And, but I know that I can get by, but what about my sister that doesn't understand this, this economical system that doesn't understand this brother that doesn't understand this world that we dwell in, you know? And so I, I had to pull myself back and just get centered, get grounded and get real grateful for the things that I do have. And mm -hmm. I'm, a, I'm an empath. I'm very empathetic. I have a Pisces moon, Pisces rising, and I'm an Aquarius mm -hmm. at, at that. So I just, you know, was, I, I feel for people. I see mm -hmm. a lot of homeless people, and, and they're not homeless to me. We're just in a sick-ass society, a sick-ass world. But if I can mm -hmm. see sickness in this world, that's a reflection of a certain level of sickness that goes on within me. While my children over here throwing out food and, you know, doing this and using up this and that. So it made me just t t kind of take a step back and get empathetic toward, toward other people. And then I came into just gratefulness and gratitude for what I have. And then I, 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 I shifted my own hustle mind and, and just not falling victim to that fearful vibration and know that I have more than enough and I'm grateful for it. Clear and simple. And you make it sound simple and... I can bear witness that it is, and empathy is a word. My my in the in the twelve moon astrology, I have a, a Pisces moon as well. I can definitely understand <laughs> what you mean. So, just again, we're just laying the foundation for our, our conversation today, and I'm really loving that the family is is um, giving feedback. How they really loving what you have to say, and Thanks, I want to now go into a, another simple definition. In terms of love, because again, we're dealing with words that have such deep and wide connotation. Right. So as, we, as we're having our conversation, let's let's make sure we're using the same. Make sure we're on the same page in terms of understanding what each other means. You know, for lack of a better word, it's not even about because one thing I know, even for instance, about unity. One thing I learned early is unity does not mean uniformity. You know. Like we all dress the same and all that. No, yeah. And I'm sure you know that that goes along the board with all these principles, these fundamental principles of our life. So, what does love mean to Kateria? Are we talking about astrology of love today? Right. Uh, I love that love, 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 love. Look at a screenshot of that face you just made. <laughs> because it's exactly what you said. You know, we're speaking from a bastardized language. Mm -hmm. that really lacks the the terminologies to even express that word. It's, it's mm. something that's not expressed with terms. Even like I tell my fiance all the time that telling him I love him is not enough. Mm. You know, I love you, but it's, it's more than that. You know, it's more than what that word is. Mm. Love, love is not a word. Love mm. is not even an emotion. It's, it's, it's an energy. Mm -hmm. and love is the frequency of creation. It's the frequency of life, you know, and that's how I see love. I see love as creation. When I love something, I want more of it, or I want to create with that thing that I love. Mm -hmm. I want to see it reflected in more ways. I Love is the frequency of creation and it is the frequency of abundance. It's, mm -hmm. it's, it's creativity. Love is love. And then love has so many different faces because love is tender, kind, and soft, but love could also be rough and tough and hard. Love is the, the frequency that transcends time and space and matter and antimatter Love is, love is the all. All things go back to love, even if it is, you know, um, even if you're take, taking a reroute just to learn something. Mm. Now, when I think about love, I think about love being on one side of the great creator. So the creator is whole. The creator is a whole being. And with the creator being a whole being, the whole being is made from, is made up of the energies, fear, and love. Love, mm. love, when you think of love, you think of life, you think of things that are good, 
You think of things that are happy. You think of righteousness. You think of healing. When you think of fear, it's the opposite of that. It's scarcity. It's, mm -hmm. it's lack. It's, um, it's hate. It's confusion. Love is clear, you know? So, but I, I still even love the opposite side because they, they form a divine dance too. So then everything goes right back to love because you, anyhow, love is everything. Mm -hmm. You yeah, know, you can't, get away from it. <laughs> you can't take love them away the from each other. Still, you know, it's, it's, it's the life substance of the of, of, of creation. So you can't. It, there's nothing outside of it. Yeah, Even fear if, taught me how to love. Yeah, yeah, it's true. It's true. Fear, it's true. And, and fear taught me how to love because when I experience, say, the death of a, a family member or the possibility of the death of a loved one, right? Mm. It brings up a level of fear in me. Like, oh my God, I fear losing this person. I fear what that would feel like. And but I can't do nothing about it. All I can do is just make sure that I am loving them to the best of my capability with my state of consciousness at that current time. So love is the cure for fear. It's the cure Absolutely. for all things. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I'm grateful how you you you, you express that I, I, I concur. It's very difficult to put English words around something like that in a so language long, that yeah. means mean 50 different things, you know? But it's, it's an energy, and we can work with that. Let's work with that. How, your definition, how you explained it. So, Kateria, speaking of love, speaking of fear, speaking of capitalism, speaking of just life in general, you know, there is so much going on in our world. And the world has always looked to astrologers like yourself um, for at very least a weather report for at very least a weather report you know and meaning like what is this that what is going on what is the energy that's happening sometimes people take it to another extent where they want someone to tell them their future and all that kind of stuff and and even how not, not, the more i've dipped into astrology i understand definitely how it can help me to understand my past and everything you know so I want to ask you to start with a basic explanation or um, a review of how you see the world that we live in there right now, astrologically speaking. What in the astrological world helps you to understand what we're viewing? Some of the some of the dominant trends, and I'll throw some out there, but I just want to ask you to start without even me suggesting any. Absolutely. So, first thing. First things first is when it comes to the to astrology, you want to f follow the first example of life, which is the sun. The sun is the first example of life, and it gives us life. So right now, the sun is in the constellation of, of Aquarius. We're in the age of Aquarius. So you want to pay attention to the, the age that you're in. The sun is the son of God. The sun is the Messiah, the messenger. So the sun being in the constellation of Aquarius, it is delivering its, its light energy, you know, its, its light codes. So it's giving us light codes of the zodiac sign Aquarius of the way that we need to demonstrate in the current time that we are in. So you want to pay attention to the higher attributes of Aquarius and embed them within yourself. So those higher attributes, something went in my eye, excuse me. Those higher attributes of Aquarius are to be inclusive, to have a healthy sense of detachment, to think of things from an observer standpoint, to be a being understanding the, that we are all important, necessary pieces to a puzzle, not just the whole puzzle. We, not one of us has all the answers, and that's Aquarius's understanding. And so you want to pay attention to the times that you are in. You want to pay mm -hmm. attention to the age that you are in because that's where the sun is. And that's the messages. If you follow the ways of the sun, which the sun is life, the sun is love, you can navigate through the times. Now, mm -hmm. you also want to know that we are under a 12,000 year. Well, the, the ages last approximately 2,166 years. Mm -hmm. Now, we are also under a 12,000-year procession of the sign Cancer. And 
cancer is feminine. Cancer is the the mother, you know. And so you think the twelve thousand year recession? Procession. Procession, okay. Thank procession. You. We're in a twelve thousand year procession of cancer. And this is why you see women rising and why we're talking so much about healing, the healing arts and or or feminine more so feminine modalities, non gender mm -hmm. but feminine mo modalities are taking over and we talk so much about how to handle our emotions in our internal world how our external world is a reflection of our internal world so much so you want to pay attention those are the, the two things i'll t tell you to pay the most attention to is the age that you're in in the procession that you're in to know how to function in the times now currently in today's time in 2022 the north node is in the sign of taurus teaching us about our our finances our resources having things of high quality being high integral and high moral people having decent characters eating um good food you know learning how how to grow food that's why we're honoring you at the real family reunion return of the gods this year with you knowing how to connect with the earth that's love what you do as as a gardener as a farmer just creating more life you know so but i will tell people to pay attention to that and pay attention to the fact that the south node is in the sign of scorpio telling us to let go of our darker energies and release our traumas our traumatic uh states of mind and to let go of our lower natured ways you know so those would be the main things that I would tell people to pay attention to right now. Of course, we mm -hmm. also have Saturn in the sign of Aquarius. And what mm -hmm. Saturn in Aquarius is telling us is that we seriously need to understand what unity is. Aquarius rules unity. And we need to be serious about our enlightenment processes and journeys. Aquarius also rules enlightenment and just higher ascension in general. So, mm -hmm. yeah, that's what I would say. Give thanks. And that's a beautiful, you're, you're a great teacher. Sis. You're a great teacher. You keep it simple and, and clear. Um, so to review, generally speaking, for those of our children who are going to watch this in a time capsule 4,000 years from now, pay attention to the age you're in. That's one. Pay attention to what the dominant procession is. And there will only be one, right? There won't be like a procession in Cancer and in Taurus at no, the same you're, time. You're we have two processions, Capricorn and Cancer. Okay, and so I've got to ask They're approximately 12,000, 13,000 years long. And so are they running concurrently? And just like they, they both enter into the new procession at the same time? Or how does that no. work? No, so, <laughs> we, so you, know, you know the concept. You know how people are saying, oh, it's the end of the world. And uh -huh. Santos Bonacci really explains this very well. Yet people say it's the end of the world. What it is the end of is the end of a procession. So we're coming mm. out of the 12,000 year procession of mm. Capricorn. Capricorn takes place in the wintertime, the cold, you know, the ice caps are melting. Capricorn is Saturn, Satan set. You know, the the uh, the great disciplinarian energy, the mm -hmm. father, you know, mm -hmm. we're coming out of that procession and coming into the ways of the mother. Mm -hmm. Capricorn's mm -hmm. the father, cancer is the mother. So mm -hmm. we're coming out of the dominating rule of the father, moving more into the ways of the matriarch, the ways of the mother. Okay. So, so, so the procession that you mentioned, it's a, there's an overlap right now. We're coming out of Capricorn and, and moving more into the, the procession of cancer being the dominant one. Yeah. And now it's stated that it's stated that the procession ended with the Mayan calendar in 2012. Mm -hmm. I've heard that, that whole before. Thing with December 21st, 2012, that oh. was stated as the date of the end of the procession of Capricorn. Mm -hmm. And now and, we are in the time of the mother. Okay. So, 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 but you did mention that we're still in the procession of Capricorn. So, are you suggesting no, that we're, we're now in this procession of Cancer? Okay. So when I yeah when I was asking you is it one at a time I thought you'd mentioned so I'm glad I'm here asking these questions to clarify because I was thinking that's why I asked that they run it concurrently. So 
we're out of Capricorn. We're just leaving Capricorn. So there may still be some of that residue from Capricorn. Yeah. And we're moving squarely. Just like there may have been some residue from the previous age, um, the age of Pisces, Pisces or whatever. Yes. Now yeah. we're moving deeply into the age of Aquarius. Yeah. We're speaking with our sister Kateria Knows, and as she, as you can see, Kateria Knows. <laughs> the name makes sense, right? And we're talking about astrology. We're talking about love. We're talking about ourselves, you know, in many ways. So there's a few things I wanted to unpack, even in terms of the 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 the, the current energy. One in particular that we probably focus on, because I know we don't have all night, you know. Um, and we, we respect your time. We're grateful for you taking the time to be with us. Is about that energy with the feminine and the masculine balance. Yeah. Um, I'm I know that this isn't something that is a new energy in terms of that creative, what I call that creative tension, that dance. However, I would say, and correct me if you see it different, or you can speak it in a way that is more affirmative and more clear, reflective of what's happening in the stars. The enemies of our people, the enemies of creation, if you want to call it that. Yes. It's funny about the word enemy, right? But yeah. those who who are holding on to a broken system yeah. are really propagating this whole man versus woman, this, this war of the sexes. Yeah. I mean, it's like something that they're really pushing. And a lot of our people are falling for it. However, I know that they're not going to be able to push something out of thin air. So there's something there. And I've heard some astrologists talk about, like, even in this time, in the, 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 this period we're going through right now with the super new moon and Capricorn and all that, I've heard them talk for a few months now about this energy between a tension between the feminine and the masculine energy. Can you speak to that? Bring some clarity to that? Yeah. There is that tension. I mean, that's that's a whole nother discussion in itself because when it comes to the enemies of creation, I love that term. We're going to coin that for sure. When it comes to the enemies of creation, they it's, it's just that name, the enemies of creation. Mm. So with them being the enemies of creation, they are anti-life and they have a depopulation agenda. Well, with them having a depopulation agenda, there are many different tactics that they utilize to fulfill their agenda, coming from putting certain toxins in the food, coming to um, purposely creating people to have a shift and changed sexual orientation. Not saying that all people who have an alternative sexual or orientation are um genetically you know engineered or anything like that no disrespect to the lgbtq uh community plus community but there is still an agenda to disrupt the hormones of men and women for this agenda because when it comes to the alternative um orientations you don't necessarily you don't naturally procreate so another way to it, this is the depopulation agenda. Another way to enforce the depopulation agenda is to divide the beings, the natural beings of creation, men, men and women coming together. We, we procreate with one another. Well, if there's a war between each other, we hate each other. We're not coming together to love and to create more life, you know, and these, these beings of the opposite forces of creation, they, they are doing so much to they they're saying that we're overpopulated people need to die some people got to go you know they they're doing so many things to kill people they're off doing, so to doing speak. A lot. and one of them is to just divide men and women the natural creators of human existence to divide us from each other divide and conquer mm -hmm. divide and rule so ast astrologically do you see where this it's 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 because of, it's because of the shift. It's because of the shift of the processions. You know, Capricorn is the father, and Cancer is the mother, and now it's kind of like a, a interesting yield, or it's like an inferiority complex. You know, like wait, you know, the masculine energy. I've been in ruling and feeling threatened by the feminine, but there's a threat of the feminine because 
people feel that the feminine is going to rule how the masculine rules, but femininity doesn't rule how masculinity rules. Um, I mean, we've been under the, the, the masculine, and it's toxic masculinity, not divine masculinity. So I, I do want to make that clear. But the toxic, people are afraid that femininity is going to rule in a dark, darker fashion. But in fem, there is dark feminine energy. We see so many examples of it. But mm -hmm. um, I would just say that we, we don't need to be in fear because the times that we are in when it comes to the age of Aquarius is for us to become that much more enlightened, you know, and, okay. and understanding love. And, and that's true. Divine feminine is, is the inner, the essence of love, the essence of life, the essence of creation, since we are the bearers of life. Indeed. Indeed. We give thanks. We give thanks for the clarity. So let's go there and, and, and even deeper into love. Now, we said uh, in, in, in making the announcement for this talk and this conversation that you would be open to uh, share some astrological insight with a few, I don't want to use the word lucky, let's say a few chosen attendees. So um, we want to talk about the energy of love, you know, and in the perspective and we can say from the perspective of a relationship between, you know, woman and man, or even self-love. If we want to open up for folks to put in the chat room and we just go according to, you know, uh, we'll we be able to field a couple, a few. What information do you want from them? And what information do you feel, um, you feel spirit-led to share tonight? So I like the idea of speaking about self-love and romantic mm -hmm. love. But I want to say this before we get into asking our listeners to, I would want them to give me just their sun signs and their partners, their partner signs. Mm -hmm. Now, the reason why we're talking about love, everyone, is because when it comes to the Real Family Reunion, Return of the Gods, that's coming up at the end of July, where we mm -hmm. will be honoring our great brother, Ross Kofi is because this year's theme for the Real Family Reunion, Return of the Gods, is the love edition. So we're celebrating self-love. We're celebrating love of life. We're celebrating love of community, of society. We're celebrating love of, um, in so many different forms of love. That's why we're talking about love today. And we're especially talking about romantic love. We're celebrating romantic love. So when it comes to, you know, our listeners asking questions of myself, I can give some, some brief insight on your romantic relationships or yourself and how to love yourself better and how to love your partner better. I think that would be good. Beautiful, beautiful. Well, let's go there for a little while. Uh, the first one I see immediately is Sagittarius and Cancer. Sagittarius and Cancer. Okay, so Sagittarius and Cancer partnership, first things first, do know that this is a karmic combination. It does not mean that you all are incompatible, but you all are coming together to transform each other from a spiritual space, okay? This type of a union with transforming one another from a spiritual space, this is the type of a dynamic that can be coined a power couple, but you mm. have to this type of a relationship you have to be very spiritual you have to understand the psychology of one another and you all must be working towards something spiritually as well as materially it's very it's also very important when it comes to this particular type of a combination to exercise and to pay attention to to your dietary choices you all should be eating a similar diet or or lifestyle, I don't like the word diet, but consuming mm -hmm. the same type of life giving foods so you can maintain a similar frequency and understanding of one another. Sometimes this particular union is a very sexual one, a very lustful one, and there could be power struggles and control dynamics when it comes to this type of a unionship as well. Mm -hmm. You do have to be mindful of jealousies and sabotage and in control factors, power struggles and control factors when it comes to this formulation. Mm. But it could be a very Clearly. powerful, mag very magnetic type of a relationship, though. Clear, clear. And I want to say, you know, I want to add, I'm not at all an astrologer. I, um, a member of 
a uh, very focused study group, Queen Yen's uh, OU Ministries, um, that really focuses on astrology as well as other other sciences of life. And one of the things that I have um, remembered, even with our studies, you know, and and it brought me back to things that we understood from from I was a young man coming into my knowledge of self is that everything. All things are compatible if there's a will, you know what I mean? There's a will and all that. You know, like, for instance, when you're talking the world of Ifa, one might say, well, this is my, this Orisha is my head or this one, or, or in the astrology world, I'm a such and such in the sun sign. But you have all these elements. We, we, we are comprised of so many elements in creation that it's very important for us to understand that the deepest aspect and the most profound aspect of love in itself is allowance allowance meaning the flow instead of the, the hustle as you were mentioning earlier allowing all things and and all beings to be themselves and allowing for alignment instead of trying to fit something together would you would you agree with that I as, as, a, as a as a fundamental principle i absolutely agree with that 100 percent and and that even takes me back to self-love mm. when it comes to when you really you got to understand your your relationship to yourself sets the tone and builds the foundation for your love of any relationship that you're in mm -hmm. and the more pure and true authentic self-love you have that's going to set the tone for the electrical frequency that emits from you that's going to magnetize certain relationships to you. So the more connected to yourself and the more pure love you have, the more authentic your connections are going to be and the more right for you they will feel and be. Right, right, right. Because we, we, we are, we reflect who we are in the world. You know, we attract to what we reflect. Yeah. We're reading what our sister Kateria knows and Y'all got the chat box hot, sister. It's all kind. Of, we're gonna have to cut it off in a minute because you know they're going. They're, 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 they're coming. So let's let me keep moving. Scorpio female and Virgo male. Okay, so before I do that, when I saw a sister post up about Pisces, Pisces female for self love. Yeah. And yeah. then we'll do the Scorpio. You, you're gonna have to remind me of that one. But when it comes to the Pisces, uh, Pisces for self love. First things first. Is you gotta let go of your feeling and thoughts of victimhood. You you cannot feel like a victim within reality, and you gotta let go of things feeling unfair. And you also have to to let go of abusing yourself or not feeling good enough. Know that if you are actualized in a human formation. The creator loves you so much that the creator allowed you to experience life. That's how you know that you are enough. Just because oh, sure. the creator sure. is allowing sure. you to experience life. If you are living sure. on, if you are living, breathing, you are enough. You are incredible. You are magnificent because the creator that created all the planets, the cosmos, the entire universe is allowing you to experience life so know that pisces oftentimes have self-doubt and worry and fear and don't feel like enough but if mm. the creator allowed you to experience life that's how you know that you are enough and let go of your victim state of mind beautiful beautiful beautiful, beautiful. um so we'll go to the, the the one scorpio um woman and virgo man Scorpio woman, Virgo man, that's actually a very compatible alignment. But of course, we're just talking about sun sign astrology. So I don't yeah. know where your Venus and stuff may be placed in moon, which though the moon is a very, it's the most important factor when it comes to compatibility, because mm. you have to live with this person and nurture and love this person. And that's all indicative of the, the, in the rulership of the moon. Now, mm. when it comes to Virgo sun, Scorpio son in a union, the friendship and the communication is so important. Usually these kinds of relationships start off as friendship. 
usually. And th there also could be love at first sight or some type of a strange circumstance or a friend could mutual friend could introduce you to this person or you can meet online. This is a, a, a good combination. It's important that you all give each other space and freedom when it comes to this type of a relationship and that you see each other as sister and brother, you know, now when it comes to Scorpio and Virgo on the lower side, insecurities, jealousies, power struggles, control issues, financial issues uh, can, can undo the union. And there could be sudden losses of attraction too, when it comes to this type of connection because of those insecurities and those controlling ways and the manipulative tactics on both parts. And Virgo's mm -hmm. got to be mindful to not be petty. We'll, we'll do a few more because I know we will we'll be on here all night if we get started. Um, and we're grateful for your time. So before we go any further, though, you mentioned the real family reunion. Talk more about that and how folks can um, really plug into that. Piece. So, yeah, the Real Family Reunion Return of the Gods is a celebration of the great awakening that has taken place on planet Earth that we are all experiencing. And this is going to be our fifth celebration, our 10-year anniversary. We hold it every other year. We will have our special guest speaker, Iyanla Van Zant, as our keynote speaker speaking at this year's reunion. We will also have the healing spirit Londrell, the spoken word artist Londrell uh, performing as our headline performer. Yes, yeah, we will yeah, have. He's yeah, he's amazing. Layla Delia, the author of Vibrate Higher, will also be mm -hmm. speaking. We have the actress, the beautiful actress and model Yaya DaCosta talking about the beauty in love of our natural hair and, and mm. how we need to come into loving our natural selves and taking care of our, our hair. So many things are going to be taking place. Live African dancers, the comedian, uh, Desi Alexander will be doing some hosting alongside my God King, my fiance, Nate Royal, who will be hosting as well. And mm. yeah, it's a family affair. We're celebrating love, love of community, love of life, love of humanity, and especially romantic love, love of self, like, and we're going to be dressed in purple and gold. So this is a three-day event, though. So the main day is Saturday, July 30th. It's going to be held at the Georgia World Congress Center out here in Atlanta. And the main day, this is when you want to dress in your royal regalia. You want to have your crystals. You want to have, you know, your, your ancient royal garb, you know, and but now Friday is the meet and greet and we have an MC face off where you get an opportunity to rap with us live on stage on Saturday and you get an opportunity to win a thousand dollars for the winner. So you could go Ooh, to an MC, an MC face off. <laughs> yeah, you're talking, you talk, you talk, you talk my language here, sis. I'm from that era where it's all about the battle rap. Even, yeah. even when you're, even when your your main goal is to propagate peace and love and knowledge yourself, you know, so yeah, MC Faceoff, yeah, yeah. Lord Jamar and King Los, Red Pill and Blue Pill are really pioneering the MC Face Off. Yeah, and you could go to Don't... Return of the Gods ENT dot com. You could download the instrumental. You can listen to our song. Myself, Herb Alchemist, my sister, and her yeah. God King, um, Ifa Shogo Kore Ifa Korere are on the yeah. song so you can listen yeah. to our song but you can write your own verse to it there's a whole mm. little thing but y'all can hit me up if y'all want more information or you could go to the website and join that challenge and make your video put the tags all of that and we're gonna see who who wins that challenge so that that actual challenge is gonna happen friday night at our meet and greet night open mic mm. night we're still locking in the venue for that space that's gonna be held though friday the 29th of July mm -hmm. and then the winner is going to be able to perform live with us on, at Saturday's event at the Georgia World mm -hmm. Congress Center then mm -hmm. Sunday is going to be held at Tassili's Raw Reality Festival style mm -hmm. outdoors Friday mm -hmm. and Sunday is there's no color theme to your regalia it's just casual mm -hmm. clean you want to vibes want to come looking good you want to come looking good friday and sunday but it doesn't matter what colors you wear for sure for sure 
So we're going to do a few more of these. Um, and so, so we'll let you go into the evening. We're yeah. grateful for your time. We're talking to our sister, Kateria Knows, and we're talking about astrology. We're talking about love. We're talking about life. And we really uh, appreciate love, your simple way of articulating sciences that because of the miseducation of the Negro, as our, our ancestor Carter G. Woodson say, are, are, are often presented as so complicated and so intense that you got to wrap your mind around and all that. But, you know, we, we really appreciate love the master teachers who take something that could be complicated and make it simple for us to understand. That's the mark of, of mastery. So another, um, another combination, I got to go back up. There are, there's a million of them in here now. <laughs> a pipe, a Aries woman and Pisces man. That sounds like fire water. <laughs> Aries woman, Pisces man. That actually can really work. And that type of a dynamic, sometimes it's a twin flame union type of a mm. dynamic. Sometimes there's like a fairy tale energy from that. Um, it is a very spiritual combination, but you all have to be mindful of not enabling each other. Or mm. sometimes there could be lies. Sometimes there could be like a leeching effect too when it comes to that type of a relationship dynamic. So you got to be mindful of that. And... Um, also be mindful of like the savior thank you queen sis you got to be mindful of the um the savior complex like one mm -hmm. person feeling weak and trying to save the other you know also the pisces has to be sure both pisces and aries they got to be sure to not be too sensitive and take offense to cer certain things that their partner may say or do you also want to make sure you, you all are showing lots of gratitude and appreciation for one another. It's important when it comes to this type of a union to sit down and have dinner together and communicate. Like, let your times of eating food, make sure you're spending that quality time consuming your meals together. That's going to be very important. And handling financial matters is also really important as well. And... um also, making sure you're, you're clearing the air before you go to bed at night. You're not going to sleep mm. mad. Mm. It's going to be really important, too, when it comes to this type of relationship. And do not shoot each other's dreams down, you know. And, and Aries got to be patient with Pisces. Sometimes Pisces moves a little slow. Sometimes Pisces needs time to process certain ideas that the Aries may be sharing. And mm. the, the Aries just got to know, like, oh, okay they're just processing right now and, mm. and and pisces has to make sure that both of these signs need time and space alone to recharge themselves so they have to respect each other's times and spaces to go into their retreats and recharge themselves beautiful this is this is very rich and again our sister is sharing insight just based on the sun sign of course you know if you know anything about astrology it can get so intricate we were talking offline one day, Sister Kateria, about even as a farmer, how I plant with the moon, generally speaking, as it relates to the, the, the germination of seeds, you know? And, yeah. you know, like right now on the waning moon, I'm planting carrots and beets and onions and all that kind of stuff. However, it can get deeper if I know what sign the moon is in or what sign the sun is in. That I might want to put, if it's a fire sign, I might want to be, be a time where I put some radishes that, have the extra kick to it and all that kind of stuff. So that's just an, 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 a reference into the world of agriculture, which is the fundamental culture of humanity. And so I think a word to the wise should be sufficient. So we have many more, but I can't get to all of them. But what I want to do is there's two that we can see all on the screen um, that I want to uh, I want to acknowledge. <laughs> Um, and I want to ask you to give your, well, your information is clear. Is there a link in your bio if folks want to get with you to get a reading or get an astrological chart done or anything like that? Yes. Uh, yeah, they can go to my IG and they can book a session. Mm -hmm. Okay, beautiful, beautiful. So we'll do, uh, put this one up here. Uh, Scorpio man and Virgo woman. We spoke about Scorpio man and Virgo woman already. Oh, we did? Okay. Beautiful. Um, 
How to love a Pisces man from a Libra woman. That's a that's a real open ended question. But I know Kateria got the, the medicine for us to, to to centralize the focus. <laughs> that's a whole book in itself, right? Yeah, wow. Why are you laughing? Is <laughs> this, this hit home in some <laughs> kind of way? <laughs> That's just a really, it's a tough one because mm. Pisces and Libra could be so similar mm. and yet so different. It's, it's such an interesting conundrum of a relationship. Mm. Um, and sometimes when it comes to Pisces, it's, it depends on if they're on their lower nature or higher nature. But oftentimes when it comes to a karmatic uh, combination, which that is a ca karmic uh, combination, is... Pisces don't process love in the healthiest of fashions. Mm. They oftentimes with that combination, like Pisces will love and show love when they are being disrespected. And, mm. but Libras are nice and Libras will tend to continue to be overly nice, overly nice, overly nice. Mm. But then the Pisces will not show appreciation and gratitude for the niceness will actually be kind of rude or uncaring, nonchalant or detached or withdrawn. Then, mm. then the, 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 the Libra can get angry, upset and be on their independent single tip. Mm. Then this is a, a very it could be a very sexual combination. It could also be very spiritual. And but at the same token, it could be also very superficial, too. They got to be mm -hmm. mindful to not use each other and they got to know mm -hmm. that they are, uh, this is a very spiritual combination that is coming forth to transform the both of them beyond their, their weaker attributes in superficial ways. So mm -hmm. they have to be become transformed and very truthful with themselves and with one another for this relationship to work. They also mm -hmm. must take care of their physical health their financial health and well-being and, and their shadow selves and sides and get to know each other on a psychological level and mm -hmm. make sure that the relationship is real in the first place. Mm -hmm. And But Libra would ask, how can I love this person better rather than how can I just naturally rise more up in love naturally for myself and for life and align with this person better? Because a Libra is 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 will compromise and shift and change themselves to benefit the person but pisces will do the same thing but that's toxic mm -hmm. on both ends i feel you i feel you i feel you thank you so much and the final one final one taurus woman with cancer man very beautiful combination the friendship aspect is very important it's very important to make sure you all, you both are attending to each other's comforts. Mm. You you're, make sure you're being tender and loving and showing appreciation to one another. But it's important to have friends around you because you can get stuck in your ways when it comes to this combination. They could get comfortable and complacent. And if they get too comfortable and too complacent, there could be just like a sudden shift in the relationship. So the friendship aspect, doing new and different things, allowing each other to be inspired, to be unique and to do new and different things is going to be very important. And um, to be each other's best friend and to, but also this relationship can be smothering too, but you, you mm. all have to know that you are both spiritual beings having a human experience and to allow each other space to have an experience. Don't become codependent, too codependent in this type of a dynamic. It is easy to slip into that. Okay. The reason we're Sister Kateria knows, and we're so grateful, sis, for your, your service to our community. You know, Thank you for showing up in your authenticity and uh, in the honoring the contract. And again, as we said at the beginning, you know when somebody in the pocket, musically speaking, you know what I mean? Because you just see them in their joy, and then this emanates, this radiates joy to, to the people. So I, as, a, as a practicing teacher myself, 
I know a good teacher is a good student, so I always want to review some of the key points as we close, just to make sure I got you right for those who are just joining us. Um, again, Sister Kateria is inviting all of us to the Real Family Reunion, which is taking place July the 29th through the 31st. Am I correct? Yes. In right? Atlanta, and, uh, Georgia. And, and on the website, and there's a website for that? Return of the Gods, ENT.com. All right. So you started off by a very profound statement. I can see why it's one of Queen of Fu's um, favorite statements from you. It's, it's, it's one of my new favorite statements as well. Astrology is the story of the heavens' influence on the earth. Astrology is the story of the heavens' influence on the earth. I love it because it's very simple. It's, you know? So it's, and that, and astrology, it's also environment. The quote is astrology... The full quote is, astrology is the story of the heaven's influence upon the earth. When you align with the stars, you live a life of a mm. heavenly existence. Mm. 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 Beautiful. So that's, that's one of the things where, as you say, uh, if I was to write an objective on my classroom, that's written behaviorally. So it's telling you the potential and it's telling you how to get there. When you align with the stars... You live a heavenly existence. Beautiful. Yeah. Um, you also said that the sky was much clearer thousands of years ago. And I wanted to ask you to expound on that, but we, I won't do that right now because of the time, you know. But right. uh, Because, um, but you also said pay attention to the higher attributes of the age we're in. So first and foremost, be aware of the age we're in. We are in the age of Aquarius. We've been hearing about that since, since I was a little baby, probably before I was born. But definitely from the 70s on, the music, the, the musicians who were visionaries and were in touch with the time were talking about the dawn of the age of Aquarius. And now we can say we're squarely in that age, you know, um, so to speak, you know, in a circle and squarely, you know, no pun yeah. intended. You know what I mean? But we're in that age of Aquarius now. And yeah. so as you were talking about being in the age, you said um, you gave some other, some other uh, instructions. Pay attention to where the north node is. Pay attention to where the south node is. And also pay attention to the dominant procession. Yeah. So we're in a 12,000 year procession of cancer. And you liken the old, the procession that we're leaving, uh, which is the procession of Capricorn to the father and cancer to the mother. And that, I mean, that makes so much sense when you look at how, in an imbalanced way, patriarchy has ruled the planet for such a long time, you know? And again, as you said, we're not talking about the divine masculine. I often say, because, you know, I, when I talk about the fact that patriarchy is a crime against humanity, you know, I have a father who's 97, and he, at this point, is the patriarch of the family. But that's not patriarchy. Patriarchy, just for those who don't know and don't understand the difference, is the, 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 the idea that the feminine, your feminine balance doesn't count and does, is not your balance, is under your feet. <laughs> that, that the voice of femininity does not matter. That's, that's the difference between patriarchy and having a, you know, a man maybe or, or an organization or something where a male is at the head. But we're talking now that we're entering into the, we're in a procession now of, of cancer, which is mother. Yeah. And so we will naturally see then we will see the rise of natural femininity. Even, even in, in males, you know what I'm saying? Even in males, we will see that. We will see folks finding that balance. Um, and you also mentioned, finally, I'm taking notes. I'm reading from my notes. Um, okay, so North Node in Taurus speaks about building your 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 wealth for lack of a better word building your 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 financial or your material abundance is that accurate yeah and then the south node in scorpio is talking about releasing the dark side you know a lot of people are doing shadow work a lot of people are doing yeah. the inner child work and all that kind of stuff so that is not just something that's trendy it's trendy based on an energetic dictate you know an energetic dictum you know what i mean if yes. you're looking at it from an astrological perspective and the saturn in aquarius is about learning unity and lord knows that has been 
the dominant. That has been the key message from the messengers that have come to us from the last thousand years at least. Yeah. But especially in the, in the last century that we just came out of. Unify, 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 unify. Yeah, you we, know? we definitely, unity is so important because, you know, and, and I like what you were mentioning, how unity and uniformity are different because yeah. unity is for us to come together despite our differences, you know? Uniformity is for us to be exactly like each other in uniform. And right. we need to unify with our differences because if everybody was just like me, y'all will be hungry because I don't grow food. I cook, but I don't grow food. Y'all will know about astrology. Y'all can't eat stars. You know, right, we, need, right. we need Ross Kofi, Brother Ross Kofi, to teach us how to grow our own food. We need hmm. herb alchemists to teach us how to heal our bodies, you know, to get some herbs. Yeah. We need yeah. to unify. And then I, I am a spiritual person. And I'm a person of higher ascension, but sometimes I need to tap tap out of the skies and, and being so existential because I'm very existential as an Aquarius, and I need to get grounding. Listening to Nicki Minaj talk her bullshit, we need, All right. we do. I do. I'm not gonna even hold you. You know, we need everybody and everything is necessary. It all plays its part. And yeah. in, in like, I am a universal spiritualist and I practice Ifa and I practice comedic science, but my business partner is a Christian who's mm. working with me on the real family reunion, return of the gods. And right. when it comes to return of the gods, it's not easy to put together. It's a very challenging thing to put together. And we've been using prayer and meditation and lighting sage and doing our elbows. And she's been bringing her, she's been praying to God, to, to Jesus. And as a matter of fact, she's a Christian and she's a powerful woman that works with many celebrities and she does great things. But Jesus told her to work with me, that she's on assignment to work with me. And mm -hmm. I'm like, thank you, Jesus. And I'm not even a Christian. But that's the type of unity, <laughs> impeccable and radical unity that we need. Beautiful, beautiful example. Beautiful example. Because the reality is I would assume I would I'll I'll take the the um I'll take the liberty of saying that this is happening not because there are differences, but because there is only one, there's oneness in creation. Exactly. Known by many names and many natures. Exactly. And so it's so beautiful to see it playing out on the world stage for all of us to see and to benefit from. Yes. So we thank you all for your example of unity. That's functional unity right there. Thank you so much. That's I appreciate that. Yeah, man. So again, sis, give your website before we go. Let us know about the details, how we can reach you even outside of the uh, Return of the Gods event, how we can link up with Kateria Knows. Oh, thank you. So you can check me out on Instagram, Kateria Knows. My, my website is astrologicschool.com. Do know that there are many imposters. So if I just start following you out of nowhere and ask you if you want a reading, it's not me. I never solicit mm. for readings. Okay? Mm. Just block the person, report the person. If, if you think I'm hitting you out of nowhere, I don't have time to do that. I'm not even really doing readings right now because I'm so focused on Return of the Gods. It's two weeks away. We will have Iyanla Van Zant as our keynote speaker, Londrell will be our headline performing artist. Uh, Layla Delia, the author of Vibrate Higher Daily, will be our key, one of our keynote speakers as well. The actress model, Yaya DaCosta, will be there talking about natural hair and how to love ourselves naturally. And we are going to be having live African dancers, comedy, and so many other things come dressed in royal regalia of purple and gold. We will be honoring our great master teachers, such as Brother Ross Kofi, Ross Seiki, the Man Heal Thyself program for these great works. You know, when it comes to when it comes to the real family reunion, Return of the Gods, the whole concept is that that, you know, it takes the, a village to raise a child. But who raises the village? The culture. A culture raises the village. But, you know, um, in order to create a new world, we need to create a new culture. And the Real Family Reunion, Return of the Gods, is creating a new culture. Cultures are created through events. They're created through style. They're created through verbiage, you know, and that's what we're doing. We're coming together to celebrate the Great Awakening as we are creating this new culture. 
and the cr cultures are created through entertainment. So just come out. This is your family reunion. The general admission, admission tickets are only $150. You know, when you're having a family reunion, you got to bring your your uh, money to the pot to make sure it happens, you know, mm -hmm. bring your potluck. So and there are VIP tickets. If you want to join the face off, if you just want to see the MC challenge face off, then you want to get the VIP tickets so you can have access and entry into Friday, Saturday and Sunday's event to see that happen. So, yeah, check out the website, returnofthegodsent.com for more. Or you can reach out to me or you can follow Return of the Gods ENT on Instagram. Or you can follow my page for more information. Yeah, thanks. Sisters, thank you so much for joining us. We're looking forward to the event. And we're looking forward to, to the co-creation of a new world alongside stars like yourself. You know, like we say, when stars, like my man, Shambay. I don't know if you know Shambay. actually... Um, spent a lot of time in L.A. But Sean Bay had a quote that years ago that he just imprinted in my soul, not even in my mind alone. When stars hold hand, they become consolation. You know what I'm saying? I love <laughs> so that. that. Yes. Enough respect. Ah, Shay, I love that. Thank you for that. I'm going to hold that with me, too. Ah, Shay, much love. Much love. See you. Bye. Peace. Good